I am ready for springtime and I hope you are too. Let's get in the mood today with this low temp soldered springtime necklace. Hey friends, welcome back. My name is Laura Beth Love and I'm an artist and jewelry designer and the author of Jewelry Making Books, Boho Chic Jewelry and Soldered Alchemy. And today I'm going to show you how you can create this spring inspired soldered necklace right in your own home. This necklace is bright and cheery, and you can choose whatever colors you like for yours. Now I chose yellow because yellow forsythia is one of my favorite springtime flowers. Now let's get started. If you're brand new to soldering iron soldering, I recommend you check out my first book, Boho Chic Jewelry, 25 Timeless Designs Using Soldering, Beading, Wire Wrapping, and More, because I go into great detail about all of the basics of soldering, as well as many other techniques. So be sure to check that out. I have collected some four millimeter glass beads, some 18 and 20 gauge wire, along with my chain nose, round nose, wire straightening, and wire cutting pliers. I also have a silver plated necklace chain with a clasp already attached, but I'll set that aside for now and we'll use it later. Now the first thing you wanna do is be sure that your beads will fit onto your 20 gauge wire. I'll be using a piece of 18 gauge wire for my branch and some small pieces of 20 gauge wire for my little beaded branchlets. So be sure the beads that you choose fit onto your 20 gauge wire. So once you check that your beads fit on your wire, you can now pull out a few inches of length and then run the wire through the jaws of your wire straightening pliers just to get any kinks out of it. Do that with both types of wire. Now if your wire looks a little bit tarnished, you can run it through a piece of steel wool just once or twice to bring back that shine. Now remember, the lower the number, the thicker or heavier the gauge of wire. The higher the number, the thinner the wire. Once my wire is all polished up, I'm going to get a ruler and I'm going to measure and cut a three and a half inch long piece of my 18 gauge wire. And then I'm going to cut one and a half inch long pieces of my 20 gauge wire. And we will need about four or five of those. So you can just measure the first one and then hold that one up against your long length of wire and then snip off the next. And that's an easy way to do it so you don't have to measure each piece up against the ruler and they don't have to be exactly perfect in length. So, you know, you don't have to worry about, you know, being a millimeter or so off. Once I have all of my pieces of wire measured and cut, I'm going to pick up my three and a half inch piece of wire and my round nose pliers, and I am going to make a loop at the end of the wire. And I'm going to do that to both ends. It just needs to be a simple loop shape it as best you can with your wire and try to get the end of the wire to touch so you don't have an open loop so it's kind of closed. We are going to solder over that later on but do your best to try to close the loop. Now we're going to put a bend in each of our smaller pieces of wire. So holding my chain nose pliers a bit below where the center of the wire is, I'll bend one side over to create a simple V or L shape. And I'm gonna do this with each of the small pieces of wire, one after the next. And don't worry if they're not perfect. Try to make them pretty even. Um, a few of mine, you know, they're a millimeter or two longer on one end than the other, and that's okay. You know, I'm just gonna work that into my design or you can also take your wire cutting pliers and you can snip a little bit off. Um, you don't wanna snip too much off because you're gonna see how we're gonna add a bead and a loop now. So for the next part, I am just going to lay out my V shapes onto my three and a half inch piece of wire to get an idea of the shape and how many pieces I'm going to use. And it looks like four are going to fit onto my branch just right. So the next thing we're gonna do is pick up one of our V's and thread a bead onto one side. Take your round nose pliers, which are also known as rosary pliers, and make a small, tiny little loop and you want to bend the loop toward the inside of the V, just as I'm doing in the video. And then once you do one side, you're going to add another bead to the other side and then do the same thing again. Grab the end of the wire with your round nose pliers and make a small loop 
bending it in toward the other loop or toward the center of the V. Try to close those loops up if you can and then move on to your next one. And you're gonna repeat the same thing one after the other for each of your little pieces of wire. Here I'll show you once more how we do that. You're going to thread a bead on, you're going to bend the wire in toward the center of the V, and then move on to the other side, add another bead, and then make another loop in the other side. And like I said, you can choose any colors you like. I also pulled out some light green beads. I thought, well, maybe I'll add some as leaves, but I like the yellow so much that I just stuck with all yellow. But imagine what color combinations you could do. Anything that you choose, the sky is the limit. So once you have all of those bent and finished and ready to go, we are next going to assemble them. And once again, I'm just seeing like how they fit. Do I need another one? Do I have too many? No, it looks good. So now we're kind of ready to move on to soldering. And I have a old cup. I have some liquid flux and a disposable brush to use for my flux. I have a pair of old pliers that I only use for soldering because once you get that acid flux on there and you know chemicals, you do not want to use it on any other jewelry. I have my soldering iron nice and hot and I am using lead free solder and as soon as my iron is hot enough, I am going to pick up a little bit of solder and I'm going to hold it against my long piece of wire and I am going to tin the entire length of wire, both sides, in the loop, everywhere. And tinning is just putting a thin coating of solder all over that wire. And I'm working on a protected surface. Like I said, I use liquid flux with a disposable brush, an old pair of pliers only for soldering, and lead-free solder. You wanna be sure to wear safety glasses, work in a well-ventilated area, and always wear a respirator mask so that you do not breathe in fumes or dust. And by the way, I've also listed all of the tools and supplies you will need for this project in the description below the video, so be sure to check that out too. As you see, I completely tinned the longer piece of wire and I filled in the loops on the ends with some solder. And then moving to a smaller piece, I will hold it with my soldering pliers and I will apply some flux to the loop ends. And again, I will apply a little drop of solder in there and I'm gonna flip it over and make sure that it looks nice on both sides. You wanna make sure that the solder is not just, you know, like kind of gaping down on one side and then, you know, too big and or too flat on the other. So you try to make it a little bit even, um, you know, touch it quickly with the soldering iron. You don't wanna hold that iron on there because you don't wanna break your beads. So you wanna kind of work a little fast. <laughs> and, you know, once you finish one, move on to the next one, and then we're gonna start to assemble them. So what we're gonna do is you're going to take your flux and you're gonna apply it again to the long branch piece of wire and then to the center of the V of each of your little branchlets, as I call them. And I'm gonna do one at a time and I'm gonna start at what I figure is, is the top and I'm going to center that V on there, apply a little flux, try to keep it you know, in position, you can hold it with your pliers a little bit. And um, I fidget with it, just try to get it just right. And you know, once you put your soldering iron on there, you know, it might move around a little bit. So like I say, you wanna work kind of quickly, make sure your iron is nice and hot and make sure you're using an iron that, you know, can get hot enough. A lot of people buy soldering irons and they're like really low watt, low temperature, and they don't get hot enough to melt lead free solder. So look for an iron that is, you know, at least 80 watt, if not 100 is even better. So as you can see, I'm going to move on to the next one. I'm going to put it in place, put a little bit of flux on it, and then a little drop of solder. And once they are all in place, I'm going to go over them with another small drop of solder just to polish them off and make them look pretty. Make sure that they each have like a nice little dot in the center of the V of each one. And that's just, you know, to add a little bit of dimension. And like I said, to give it that polished look. 
And once again, you wanna be careful that you don't hold your iron on there too long, you don't wanna melt everything apart, and you certainly don't wanna break off a bead. So as I'm doing, I'm just putting a little dot down each one, and then once I'm done, I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. Now, don't get frustrated if you have some trouble, you know, making the little dots on there. This is more of an intermediate type of project. So if you're like a beginner beginner, you know, start with one of the easier projects or, you know, maybe scale it down and just do like a real small version of this. And as I always say, practice, practice, practice. The more you practice, the better you're going to get and you're going to see results. And you're only gonna get that with practice and you can do it. So uh, here's a closer look. I'm just going to go over it and then I'm going to attach my chain. I've taken a chain that already has a clasp. I pulled it out and I made a snip in the center of the chain on the opposite end of where the clasp is to give it two ends so that I can attach the chain directly to my necklace. I applied a little bit of flux to the end of the chain and to the end of the necklace and I'm holding it with my soldering pliers and very carefully I am going to hold that very very end of chain against the end of the pendant and I'm going to just heat it with the soldering iron just for a second and it's gonna melt it right in there. And I sometimes will have to fidget with it and move it around a little bit. You wanna make sure that your solder doesn't like run up the chain. You know, you can always snip a little bit of the chain off if it does. And um, you know, you, your chain is attached then and you don't have to use jump rings. You know, it's a fun, easy way to do it. I like the style of it. And then I'm going to very quickly go over where I attach the chain just to smooth out that end and make it look really pretty and I'm gonna do the same thing on both sides this is a silver plated chain and I love that it's already assembled and has a clasp on it because it makes it almost like an instant necklace you can after you make your pendant you know all you need to do is solder that chain on there and and it's done so we're going to move over to the sink and I'm going to use a soft fingernail brush and a couple drops of dish detergent and some warm water and I'm going to scrub it all up I'm going to scrub the pendant and I'm going to scrub the chain and I'm going to rinse it and dry it very well and you can take a soft cloth and give it a nice little polish and make it nice and shiny and that's your pendant and I really hope that you enjoyed this tutorial thank you so much for watching and if you liked it give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe don't forget to hit the little bell next to the subscribe button so that you can get notified when I release a new video I have some more in the works so be sure to check back soon and I'll see you next time.